Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mupo and Friends. We are Jocelyn Pearson. And I'm Michelle Mupo. And we're brought to you by Mupo TV. And you could catch all our shows and many others at www.mupoentertainment.com. And if you want to watch the TV shows, that's mupotv.com. That's www.mupotv.com. And you could also catch our shows on other platforms as well. Now, we've had some really cool guests that I have to say, um, they told us things that they don't even talk about on their, on other shows. They sure have. We've uh, caught them off guard a few times, which tells us they haven't shared that. So watch us Sundays, 2 p.m. Eastern for the premiere of each episode. And we want to thank you for tuning into our show where we love bringing you awesome celebrities and entrepreneurs you want to know. So Michelle, did you have a Mupo Awesome Week? I always have a Mupo Awesome Week. Even when I'm not having a Mupo Awesome Week, I'm not going to lie. Something about it is good. So there's always wherever, you know, like if something bad happens, I just say, okay, it happened. Let's move forward and go forward. Because that's what everyone should do. Agreed. Yes. And how about you? I know you always have a Mupo Awesome Week as well. I do. Yes, it was a a good one. I got to say we're above zero and uh, that's Celsius for us, but that's actually warm and we're uh, loving the sunshine. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Well, (laughs) well, I'm getting, I can't wait to see your show. So for those of you who don't know, Jessalyn's coming out with with a show herself. She's going to be a host on on her own show um, because that's what we do here. And um, I'm looking forward to it. So with that said, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with our celebrity guest. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Mupo and Friends. Our special guests today are members of a seven-piece band hailing from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Their recent release, Crumbs, boasts 12 tracks, from sweet and bluesy to trashy and flashy. Their musical talent, combined with a deep love of rock and roll, makes them a band you'll want to put on constant rotation. Please welcome the Borstel Boys Band. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Right on. So um, I have a couple questions. Like, did you know your band members before you guys joined? Yes. Uh, well, the band, the Borsa Boys actually started. It was a solo project that I was uh, writing an, an album. And um, so we started and I was using guys that I've played with in various other bands and some other musicians from around town. And actually during the first album is a couple people that I brought in to play on the album. Actually, it turned into a band. So that's how it happened. But um Out of the whole band, I bet you half of them I was already playing with in different bands and things like that. Wonderful. So who are your musical influences, both past and present? Um, Well, present, I'd be hard to find something, but uh, I would say uh, obviously that my favorite band of all time, rock and roll band, is The Faces, Rod Stewart and The Faces, um, The Stones, Beatles, obviously those those bands, but uh, it would be The Faces is my biggest influence. Hmm. Uh, present I don't know I mean I've, I've been listening I listen to like you know Faster Pussycat New York Dolls well I guess that's really not even present um, I don't know who I would say present wise um, well, New, York, New York Dolls is with the Conti brothers right yes yes Steve Conti yeah and uh, um, I guess Tuck Smith is a, is a I'm a big fan of so his band was the Biters, and I know he's doing solo stuff now. So I would say him as well. Beautiful. Now tell us about the SOS and and two twenty. Twenty twenty twenty. I'm sorry. Twenty twenty SOS uh, twenty twenty. We did uh, two years ago. It was a um, we were raising money and awareness, and it was really more about awareness than money because I knew that we weren't going to raise enough money or anything that would help what we were trying to do, which was raise awareness for the clubs and in the venues that were going under um, because of COVID. Um, It was more to raise awareness for the politicians to actually sign the bill to get uh, relief money to those, um, to those clubs and venues so that they wouldn't have to shut down and stuff like that. Um, That all started here in Pittsburgh. I'm on a label called the vault records 
And that's out of Pittsburgh. Bob McCutcheon runs that. And it's a great label, beautiful studio that um, he uh, actually has faith in me for some reason that he likes my music and the way I produced it. He allows me to work out of his uh, on his um, out of his uh, studio and his label. So we um, another band from the label, Royal Honey, um, a guy named Eric Roger wrote a song and uh, approached Bob about it. It was called SOS 2020. And he thought that we could do something with it for that, for that cause. And I was asked to produce it. And um, when I produced it, I produced a song. And then I also produced um, the video and I did a concert series after we released the song, which was um, eight weeks of um, a ton of three bands a night. And then the, the second four weeks was, genres of music so i had a jazz night a blues night and things like that um that went over okay. really well and I, the song had over 70 musicians in it um it just got everybody together during a time where nobody was really playing live so it was kind of cool we had them all everybody was coming in and out of the studio and it was nice to see everybody so it was it was a cool project that way because it seemed like it lifted the spirits of uh the musicians that were actually involved you know so Wow. So is there a particular reason the new album is titled Crumbs? Um, well, it was released because it was recorded right before COVID. And we kind of released one song at a time over a year and a half. And then we released the album. So it was Crumbs. And it was also uh, a thing that a lot of people say I shouldn't really say a lot. But uh, sometimes it seems like that's what uh, the band or that we get kind of playing original music is crumbs you kind of get crumbs because of uh it seems like any more that uh tribute bands and cover bands get all the uh the shows and and they make the money at things so you, you can get in a tribute band and play other people's songs and you can make money and or you can be a, an original band and you kind of get the crumbs so it kind of came from that as well you know what that is so true that is that is true like it's 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 a shame too because there's real talent out there. Now I know, um, you know, one of the songs on Crumbs is a tribute to your late dog. Can you tell us about that? Because I'm a big dog lover. Me too. I actually have him in the other room, so he was <gasps> barking during the, the <laughs> during the uh, interview because he he sometimes he won't shut up, but he's like me. But uh, Twenty One Grams is a song about my late dog Abby. And she was absolutely wonderful and she passed away and everybody always says that dogs or animals don't go to heaven. And um, I've always been intrigued by, there was a study a long time ago um, about 21 grams is supposedly the weight of your soul. So when you die, um, your body loses 21 grams. In, in its weight and uh oh. I, I can't remember who did the study it was in the early 1900s but they had people on a table and they were being measured and as soon as they passed away their their body weighed 21 grams less so they always said that that was the weight of the human soul and i uh, kind of put the two together and said that i know the 21 grams is what's going to take you to heaven and i wrote the song that way about that i knew that i would see her again you know so mm. well we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with our special guest. with uh, Anthony Lalonde, Crumbs is more of a group effort than your previous release. Yes. Was that intentional or did it just evolve that way? I would say it's, it's evolved that way. Um, like I said, the first album was more, um, it was started out as a solo album for me. And then um, the band was actually together for a couple of years when we went in to record Crumbs. So, um, playing with each other for two years and uh, knowing what each other do. And then everybody actually contributes. Even if I wrote a song or something like that, um, I bring it in and everybody puts their touch on it. So 
it was more of a collaboration. And um, the other guy who writes most of the stuff with me, Vinny Q, is the guitar player in the band. Um, so he he also writes tunes. But on this album, and, it, and actually the next album that we're going to be releasing, um, it's even more so um, a part of everybody. You know, it just seems like the longer we're together, the more everybody contributes. Joe, the, uh, our keyboard player, and Joe comes up with keyboard riffs, uh, great vocals, and um, everybody. Um, and now David Bazard is in the band as well, and uh, he's contributing writing on, on the new album. And it just seems that the more we're together with each other, the more we actually work off of each other, where we um, have ideas on other people's things. And so it's just getting gradually better that way. So. And how do you come up with the ideas for your uh, music videos? Um, that's kind of me. Um, sometimes I do like a, a studio video and sometimes I'll do, I like to do like concept videos where, um, you know, you're following somebody around and then they end up in, at the show at the end. So then you do a couple of those. And then the one video we did for, um, I believe it was take the wheel was, um, we brought in a girl and she, she comes to pick up uh, the whole, the whole video is actually a concept where he, he's sleeping the whole thing. And it's, and it's actually a dream. So he's like a nerd in an office building or something like that. And he comes to work <laughs> and he falls asleep. I don't know if you, if you ladies have seen it, but he falls asleep. And then his boss is actually, he's picking his boss up at a nice mansion in a nice car and they're going out for a ride and enjoying the day. And by the end of the video, he wakes up, because it, it, after you do so many videos, it's it's you don't want to do the same thing over and over again, where it's just the band and you're just doing the song, which those are cool here and there and stuff like that. But sometimes I like the concept of trying to think about what the song's about as well and uh, trying to incorporate some kind of storytelling to it, I guess. So what venue atmosphere is your favorite? Um, a medium sized club. I, I, I don't like. Uh, Although I go to them, I'm not a fan of like arena shows and things like that. It's just, it's too much. Um, the sound isn't, um, it's it's a different kind of sound than it is. I Honestly, I like a small venue where you're like close to the stage and you hear the amplifiers and things like that. Um, a medium sized room that holds about 400 people is probably the biggest that I would like. I mean, personally, if I had my own choice to go to, like a small theater, I guess. Hmm. And outside of the, you know, outside of practicing and, and music, do you hang out with the band? Yes. I, I actually live, me and my girl live with my guitar player. We've lived together for like 18 years. Um, and we hang out, uh, we go see bands with um, other guys in the band. Everybody in Pittsburgh goes out and sees other bands that are, you know, as certain genres of music hang out together and things like that. So um, we always hang out for different events and things like that. So what's your favorite way to relax after a gig? Ooh, I usually go out and party <laughs> with, the, <laughs> with our friends um, and stay out way too late for my age, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I guess I should grow up maybe, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, we end up just going out drinking after the show, you know? So, and I actually started a late night concert series here in Pittsburgh. That's called music for uh, that. I started a, this is okay. It's a bunch of different things. So I started a thing called music from the 412, which is eventually going to be a TV station that plays um, local bands, videos, and also unsigned bands from around the country or whoever wants to send me their videos and music videos I'll play. And there's also going to be shows on it. So I'm doing my own show on that, which is called Rocky's Rock and Roll Symphony, which is kind of like a late night setup thing where I have a, Love band, it. I have a band on with an, a band and acoustic act and also someone who's involved with, um, arts or entertainment in, in, in the, in the city. So, and I also interview someone from each one. So it's kind of set up like a late night thing, which I'm going to start filming those episodes soon. Um, and hopefully the station will be out late September, but uh, I also put on some shows at a local VFW in the South side of Pittsburgh, which is a late night show and not many places are open until three in the morning. So we have shows from 11 till three where you can go watch original music. And it's kind of for people who, uh, 
in bands who are since COVID, everybody plays early, like seven, eight o'clock shows and things are usually done by 11 now. Um, so now bands can actually, after their show can come to this show and watch an original band, enjoy a drink from 11 till three. And, um, and like I said, when that's over, then I usually go out to a friend's house and I'm home by six in the morning on the weekends, but, uh, Typical. That's Typical how I musician. Uh, Typical yeah. musician. Kind of, yeah, I guess. We're going to take a commercial break and we'll be right back. with the Barstow Boys. Actually, um, I'm going to call you Rocky from now on because I just love that. That's awesome. That's what everybody, I, I just all love, my friends call me Rocky. So that's I, great. I love that. So um, Rocky, I want to know what it is about um, the faces tune Barstow Boys that inspired you, you know, for the name after the band. Like what, how did you get the name? Um, first off, I love the faces. I said that already to you. Um, my old band was called Torn and Frayed, and that was after a Stone song from Exile on Main Street. And um, one of my favorite albums of all time is Exile on Main Street. Um, so I was kind of looking in that vein, and, and, and I was going through this uh, the Faces collection and the Borstal Boys. And then when you look into what the Borstals were and, and why they wrote the song in the first place, the Faces did, it's a, um, it's a place for juvenile delinquents. I love okay. it. And so I guess the 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 British, when they seen the kids from from the Borstals running around the neighborhood, they would call them the Borstal Boys because they were always causing trouble or something like that. And then it goes back. There's a Brennan Behan book, I, I, I guess, that was written that was called the Borstal Boys. And um, that was about uh, that wasn't. Uh, it was about a, a love relationship with two, two guys in, in a prison in a Borstal or whatever. But it was more so the the young kids. Uh, being delinquents and everybody looked down on the Borstal boys. And I, and I kind of dug that. It goes with the, the crumbs thing, you know what I mean? About being, getting the crumbs, you know what I mean? It's, it, it's kind of in that same vein. So was there a pivotal moment when you knew music was going to be your path? When I was young, I, I was, uh, I was playing in bars since I've been 16 years old. Uh, I went to a performing arts high school. Um, my, a lot of the friends that I hung out with when I was younger, my, uh, I hung out with kids that were my brother's age, so like four years, three, four years ahead of me, and they were in the music and in the band. So I uh, I kind of just latched on to that, and I kind I liked it. I liked playing. I liked, uh, I liked how people paid attention to you on stage, I guess, you know what I mean, because you're in a band and things like that. And once you got past that kind of thing, it was more just because I enjoyed playing music and things, you know? Hmm. And tell everyone what is so special about this, the music scene in PA. Cause I don't, I, I think they relate to, to New York city all the time and it's really not. PA is where you want to jam. I, I guess so. Um, I get, you know how everybody always says the grass is always greener on the other side. Um, there's a ton of places to play here in Pittsburgh. Um, venues, small venues, bigger venue venues. Um, Places that that hold, you know, that that hold the bands are like the the eighties kind of metal bands that come through, and they're they're all still on tour. So you have those places, and then you have the local guys opening up for those shows. So there's tons of opportunities here, and and the level of uh, musicianship is fantastic in Pittsburgh. Um, in fact, a, a lot of Pittsburgh guys go out to Nashville and they go their own ways, but they always come back here. You know what I mean? Because they want to live here in Pittsburgh. Even though you go to some of those other cities, they want to come back to Pittsburgh and they do. Um, it's just uh, people here 
there are people who still fight about music and things like that. But for, for the most part in this town, people try, if you're cool and you're supportive of other people, people will support you as well. So that's a good thing about this town. You know what I mean? Um, other than that, I mean, I've been to other cities that were music cities and they didn't, they were cool, but they didn't, it wasn't like they impressed me like that they were a better music town than Pittsburgh. So there's that, I guess, you know. So how do you feel social media has reshaped artists' relationships with their audiences? I don't know. I kind of hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate that I got to go on social media and things like that, because then you get into other things. The only reason I use social media is basically to uh, promote my band and the things that I'm doing musically. Cause if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be on Facebook or anything else. Uh, um, it's done good and it's done bad because I can actually put a video out and people can see it immediately and I can, and I can share it around rather than a long time ago, you used to hang flyers on poles and, and you would go up to the bar owner and you'd be like, I have a band and, and you bring them a packet. It would have an eight by 10 in it and it would have a CD or back then a long time ago, maybe a cassette. Uh, but, uh, they would listen to it and they would have you at their bar. You'd play during the week. And then if he liked you, you come back on the weekend or something. Now there's, uh, so you have, I think there it's good and bad because now there's so, so many people are playing music now, which is a good, great thing, but there's so much and you're competing with all these things. And it's just, sometimes it might be too much. It might be oversaturated in my opinion. Um, I think it's, I think it's hurt. Uh, people who write songs because everybody can download their songs and you're getting paid 0. 0.0000 whatever six three or whatever of for every time somebody plays your song when you can make you know more money by going to a show and sell and selling a cd uh to somebody for 10 bucks or something like that um but nobody nobody has cd players anymore and everybody gets their music for free and and i don't like the way social media if someone don't like you, you get, uh, you get, nobody likes you then, or it starts arguments and things like that. So I don't know. There's good and there's bad things about it, you know, social media in general and the internet and, and the start of all everybody being a, they're all experts in every field. It's true. Happening that day, they're an expert at, you know, so. That's I, true. I don't know if that answered your question or not, but uh that was my answer. <laughs> that was a good answer. That was a good answer. Now tell us what um what you see with the future, you know, with your band. Like tell us what's gonna gonna happen in the next year. Well, in the next year, we just finished another album. Um, it's being mixed right now, and hopefully it'll be out by the end of this year. Um, we're probably gonna release a couple songs. We usually do that. We do like a song every month. We'll do three songs and then we'll release the whole album. But um I would hope in my future that somebody would eventually start playing it on the radio or somewhere where it could be heard and people could hear it. Cause I really believe the band and the songs are really good. And I think people would like it. I just haven't figured out the exact way to get it in front of uh, the masses, I guess you would say, you know what I mean? Hmm. Well, we're going to have to talk about that, but we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with the conclusion of our interview. <laughs> Rocky from the Borstal Boys. So before we wrap things up, we have one last question. If you were to interview yourself, what question would you ask and what would the answer be? Who? <laughs> Got me there. Um, if I was going to interview myself, 
I would ask myself, why am I still doing this at, at 50? Why am I still playing music? Um, and I guess the answer would be because I love what I'm doing and I love music. And at this age and actually in the last five years with this band, I've been more creative in writing and producing than I have been for the 20 years before that playing 25 years before that playing. So I'm not going to stop. I just watched an interview with Keith Richards the other day on CBS, the morning show. And they asked him why he didn't sell his catalog. And he said, because I'm still adding to it. And that's someone that I can wow. uh, respect. I can really respect that of it rather than like Bob Dylan selling all his uh, songs to some uh, corporate thing. And he was, you know, against the establishment and sold his songs. I'm more in Keith Richards camp. You know what I mean? He's still adding to his catalog. And, and you know, he's kind of like, you know, he's not an underdog, but he's kind of an underdog because in, in, in musicians and stuff, everybody looks at Keith Richards and they're like, hey, he's really not that good, but he's a god. And, uh, you know, so music is about enjoying yourself and, uh, writing and creating for me anyhow. So that would be my answer to my own question, I guess. Awesome. Thank you. It's been a pleasure visiting with you. And you can find the Borstal Boys Band's music on music.apple.com, deezer.com, borstalboys.bandcap.com, bandcap.com, sorry, soundcloud.com, and Spotify. And follow their gigs on bandsintown.com. You can follow, like, and subscribe to the Borstal Boys Band on Facebook under the Borstal Boys at Borstal Boys on Instagram, on Twitter at Borstal Boys One, on their YouTube channel under Borstal Boys, and at their website, www.borstalboys.com. And always, thank you for tuning in to Mupo and Friends, courtesy of Mupo TV. And you could catch this show and many others at www.mupoentertainment.com. And you could catch all the shows at mupotv.com. This is Jesslyn Pearson with our host, Michelle Mupo. Until next time, have a Mupo awesome week.